So today we begin with the president of Lehman College, Dr. Fernando Delgado, the son of immigrants, father from Mexico and mother from Spain. Dr. Delgado, like more than 60% of Lehman students, was also a first-generation college student holding a bachelor's degree in political science from San Jose University and a master's degree and PhD in communication studies from the University of Iowa. Dr. Delgado continues to publish and present his research, which centers on questions of Latinx identity and popular culture, as well as the role of sports in society. He joins us now to share more. Please welcome President of Lehman College, Dr. Fernando Delgado. Thank Hello you. and welcome, and thank Good you for taking the time to be with us here sure. on My set. Pleasure. My pleasure. Well, what do you think? This is your it's, campus. It's nice. I've never been to this part this far down in the campus, and uh, it's a real production studio. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it's uh, quite nice, quite nice. Thank you. Not bad for a sub-basement, huh? Not bad for a sub-basement, yes. <laughs> <laughs> At least you get all the vibration and the noise out of here. Right, right. Well, again, thank you. I know this is a very busy season for you, specializing in Latinx identity, celebrating Hispanic Heritage and Month. Hispanic Heritage Month carries a certain weight here in, uh, in the Bronx that, frankly, I didn't experience when I was in Minnesota for the last 17 odd years. But it's good to be in the environment, and it's good to feel la cultura uh, from all the, all, all the various places that you feel. Um, you know, we're in the middle of it but we've already had a number of events on campus and we've had some occasions to work off campus, particularly with the New York Yankees. So it's an exciting time for us. Nice, and uh, you did mention coming in from Minnesota. I know you took office in July of 2021, which I would say is still considered like the pandemic era. Yep. Uh, that must have been a little challenging for you, but let's just share with everyone uh, a little bit of your background because when we sure. were discussing <laughs> your, your travels uh you originate from california then you studied in iowa mm -hmm. then uh you I, arizona faculty member in arizona yep. faculty member in arizona and then in minnesota you also were a faculty member i did most of my administrative work in in minnesota Soda. and then in wisconsin wow and then now you're here now serving here. as our president yep. on lehman college campus in the bronx in the bronx in the boogie down bronx in the boogie down bronx at the best what i consider to be the best college in the system, best four-year college in the system. We have a lot of pride in what we do, and we have a lot of external accolades for what we do, and our students are excellent. They deserve the best of us, and I'm thrilled that we have the faculty and staff that uh, believe in our mission. Many of them are alums. A lot of them come from the Bronx and have that sense of pride, and uh, we put it all together in what we would call a menudo, where I come from, and it's very tasty. It works very well. Oh, we love that. We call that sancocho. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> So um, let's talk a little bit about that transition from Minnesota mm -hmm. to the Bronx in the middle of a pandemic. Um, I mean, traffic was a lot less. Right? That was helpful. Um, <laughs> it, it was it was it was it was easy and complicated at the same time. OK, so I, I have to say the people in New York, despite everybody's stereotypes on television, were incredibly friendly and not just on campus. Um, my wife and I, she's originally from Minnesota, lived her entire life in Minnesota. We were struck at just how friendly and open people were. Uh, there were glitches because staff weren't around. So, you know, we came out in the spring. The chancellor allowed us to come out in the spring and find an apartment. And then we realized nobody was going to let us into any apartment buildings. Hmm. Uh, so we would go to apartments and stand on the sidewalk and they would hand us an iPad and do a video tour. And we kind of sat there going, well, we could have done this from our house in Minnesota, but okay, we're here anyways. But at least we got to know the neighborhoods. Um, we were living in a different time. It was a very different time. Um, our moving company subcontracted three times because they couldn't find drivers. And so our household goods didn't get here for about three and a half months. So that was kind of fun. Uh, it was like camping in an apartment. Yeah, but what made you decide to even take on this position? So I worked in a system that was going through some changes and uh, there weren't a lot of long-term commitments to uh, a group of us in the senior staff, which is fine. Um, I had a daughter who was graduating high school that year, and her dream was to go to school in New York. Um, I, I had a partner who was interested in an adventure, and her dream was to live in New York. And I was in the middle during the pandemic of uh, a professional development course. Um, 
for people who were kind of interested in being a president. So one of the homework assignments was to go study an institution that was looking for a president that might be a good fit. And my natural inclination was looking Texas and California because that's where my networks were. Um, but Lehman kept popping up because they had a presidency open. And uh, so one of the homework assignments was write a cover letter. And it was being evaluated by the people running the program. And they said, oh, this is a pretty good letter. You gonna apply? And I hadn't thought about it, so I went and talked to one of my colleagues in Minnesota. And they said, hey, why don't you apply? I mean, you clearly have already done the work. So we applied, and they called and said, you know, we wanna do a Zoom interview. Okay, you made it to the next round. We wanna do an all day Zoom interview. Okay, and at that point, it was around the holiday season, I, I turned to my kids and, and my wife and I said, I, I, I think this is gonna get serious. This is no longer a homework assignment. And sure enough, shortly after January, the chancellor called and said, uh, you want a job? Wow. And uh, then it got real serious for about 48 hours. Right. And so uh, we chatted and, uh, and I, I chatted with my ex-wife because one, one or both of the kids were gonna stay behind. And we kind of worked it out amongst us. And uh, we came out to start that next chapter of, of our adventure. And one of the things that I really was drawn to Lehman is that the story of Lehman students resonates with me, my story, my family's story, where I grew up, when I grew up. Um, and, and of course, when you come to a place like New York, whether it's the Bronx or almost any of the boroughs, um, you know, the diversity, right. the saturation of cultures, uh, the, the, the energy, it's infectious. And so the adjustment was pretty short to living here. I mean, it took a minute to get used to traffic on the parkways, but we, f we found our happy places. Uh, it, because of COVID, it took a lot longer to adjust to the campus because we were closed for most of my first year here. Um, but now everything's kind of back to normal. And so what similarities or differences do you find being in the Bronx versus Minnesota? Aside from the traffic. Oh, no, we didn't have traffic. That's what I'm saying, yeah, right? Yeah. You didn't no. have traffic over there. Um, Target. Target's Target? similar. Yeah. Tar Target's, <laughs> Target's similar. Um, <laughs> There's really not, I mean, look, we, we lived in really far north Minnesota, lovely Duluth, Minnesota, along Lake Superior. Uh, Metropolitan Index number is about 120,000 people uh, straddling that lake. Um, it's a great college town, mm -hmm. lots of friends, family. Uh, th it, there's just not, it's n no. What about the culture, though? Like, where, how, how, was there a, a strong population of, of Latinx in Minnesota? In, in, <coughs> in the Twin Cities, there is. Um, and it goes back three or four generations because of the packing plants and the railroad. Um, and then in southern Minnesota, along Interstate 90, there historically were a whole bunch of poultry processing and meat processing plants um, across east-west to Minnesota. And over the generations, uh, it's been immigrants. Uh, n not just from Latin America, mostly Mexican, mm -hmm. um, but also uh, from, from uh, Africa. A lot of Somalis and Sudanese as well. So an interesting culture mix in southern Minnesota. There was, I remember when I worked down there at another school, there was a, a high school and the principal who was Latina, she said, you know, in our schools, there are 19 different languages spoken other than English. Um, and so it's surprising because it's not visible but if you scratch the surface in these communities, you see the signs that there is, that there is an emerging community there. Um, and certainly in, Min in Minneapolis and St. Paul, there are pockets. Uh, you know, as, as we always say, we have a Cesar Chavez Boulevard. So that says something to us. So that's where the community sort of centers at, particularly around Cinco de Mayo, because it's predominantly Mexican immigrants. Uh, but no, up in Duluth, um, not, no, not so much. Not like here. Here we're up front and center especially here on campus. Yeah, of course. So it is important that we have representation in leadership positions. And how has that served you? It, again, seamless, right? Because if you think of most of the history of Lehman, for 26 years we had Ricardo Fernandez. Mm -hmm. And Ricardo retired. I don't know why. I mean, 26 years, you might as well go for 30, but Ricardo and his family thought it was time, so fair enough. And then we had Jose Luis Cruz come in. Um, and Jose Luis came from California, but his, his background is from Puerto, Puerto Rico, so it was a good fit. Um, and then we had an interim as Jose Luis moved on, and then myself. So there, there is almost an expectation, there's this legacy of having Latino or Latina presidents 
um, be in the Bronx. We see that with the other two campuses. I've got my, my colleague Daisy and my colleague Milton at, at Hostos and Bronx Community College. Um, and I think we, we play to those strengths. We're not exclusive. We want everybody from the Bronx and beyond. But I think it's important um, to communities in the Bronx that they see us as, as symbols, as, as representatives, as people who understand the communities and the stories that come from those communities. Absolutely. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about the Mexican Studies Institute that sure. resides here at Lehman College. But we're going to take a quick break, you guys. We're going to have more with Dr. Delgado when we return. You don't want to miss. Hey everyone, welcome back to Open. We are celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month with the president of Lehman College, Dr. Fernando Delgado. And before we went for break, we were discussing the importance of representation in leadership. And, um, and then there's also the celebration of Hispanic Heritage mm. Month and where we all kind of get placed into that pot of Sancocho and honor each other. Mm -hmm. And um, we discussed the Mexican Studies Institute before we went to break and its, it's relevance here on campus. So uh, talk to us a little bit about your role with them. Well, my role is really to try to raise its profile, raise some money, uh, give it some shape and direction. But the Mexican Studies Institute is like a number of other um, identity institutes. They they're housed on a campus, but they serve all five boroughs. They're open to partner with any of the other institutions. Um, in some ways, we take our cues from perhaps the most famous and longstanding, which is El Centro de Puerto, uh, Estudios Puerto Ricanos at, mm -hmm. uh, at Hunter, but there's also a Dominican Studies Institute at, uh, at City College. For, for us, the profile is, is interesting because both in Westchester County, but also in the Bronx, the, the Mexican population is growing perhaps not as fast as the Dominican population, uh, perhaps not, not the sort of anchors that the, the Puerto Rican community has had here, but it's growing. You keep mentioning the Dominicans. we got to acknowledge you for being honored as the uh, padrino yeah. this year at the Bronx Dominican Parade. Y yeah, that was, um, that was interesting. That was interesting. My first reaction is, I, they know I'm not Dominican, right? Are they, are they sure? <laughs> they, they were very, no, 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 that's fine. You know, you represent Lima, and Lima is part of the community. It's part of the fabric. Um, and I'm like, okay, I, you know, tell me what I need to do. But that's the beauty. We embrace each other. Oh, yeah, no, and it was great. I mean, there was, a, there was a wonderful gala event a couple of nights ahead of time. And then, you know, we gathered for what, four or five hours along the Grand Concourse. And, you know, us, us special people, we got to wear a sash and, and, uh, and, and hang out with the folks. And it's, it's you know, it's funny because people have these stereotypes of the Bronx. And you have celebrations like that that literally pull people out into the streets. And, and you realize how thin, how um, manufactured some of those stereotypes are when you think about how strong that sense of community, that sense of family, that sense of celebration together happens. And I think it's even more so coming out of, of COVID. I think lots of people are looking for those opportunities. So it was a little bit warm, I gotta be honest. It was a little bit sticky out there. But uh, you know, we hung out there by the stage and along the route for about four and a half, five hours. It's, it's a fun afternoon. I bet, and I bet you've been celebrating a lot this month, right? <laughs> our our, our yeah. token month, September 15th to October 15th. Um, I understand that uh, Lehman itself has uh, housed a lot of these events. So can you share a few of them? I mean, I mean I'm sure you've been celebrating quite a bit uh, this particular year. So it, it is interesting. It is interesting because some of the events bleed from the community. So even if you go to things like the Bronx Chamber of Commerce, there's that vibe. Um, and we had a gala during Hispanic Heritage Month. Um, they're serious. We, we've, we've had a couple of elected officials, um, Yudelka Tapia and Natalia Fernandez, host a drug policy in the Bronx uh, event on our campus. And I think that was important. It's somber, but it's an important conversation about the wellness and the, and the health of our communities. Obviously, uh, for, for us and our students, we've had a couple of events with the New York Yankees. Um, and kudos for them to reach out and celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month and we love them as partners and, and it seems like we're, we're developing more and more partnerships. That's been fun. The big Celia Cruz event on campus. Um, yeah, you know, plus she just got placed on a coin. That's the whole thing, right? She's on a quarter. I mean, who'd have thought Nuestra Gente would be on a quarter in the United States? Afro-Latina on top of that. Afro-Latina, right? Yeah, it's yes. a, a twofer in that respect <laughs> because we're not supposed to be in those spaces. 
And so not only is she in that space representing us, but we have the opportunity then during Hispanic Heritage Month to have celebrated her. And uh, those, those are wonderful moments. And, and you know, it is only a month, but I gotta be honest, um, because we have wonderful faculty and the composition of our campus, about 60% Latino, um, unlike perhaps Minnesota, um, maybe we don't just confine the celebration to just the one month. Got it. Um, you know, we have educational, uh, artistic, uh, performance activities throughout the year that represent la comunidad. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and certainly we have faculty and staff who teach courses and do enrichment beyond the course that are wonderful. But yes, I mean, the month, I'll be honest, sometimes by the time you get to October 15th, you're a little bit tired. You're a little bit tired because there have been so many events. I mean, I can think of six already that we've had and we've still got a couple of weeks to go. Yes, and the reason I had asked you about the, the difference in culture is, and even your, um, your enrollment into this space is like what that, what that must have been for you, uh, for you it, from a cultural sense, you know? Because uh, like you said, it, our leadership was of such and you stepped into it like seamlessly. However, um, that's not where you come from. So I just wonder like what that was like for you well, you step tentatively, right? Um, I, know, I, I know I'm Latino, but I also know that I predominantly grew up around Mexicans and Mexican-Americans. And we have some unique characteristics to our culture, and it doesn't always blend with other cultures. And so there's a lot that's familiar, and there's a lot that's not. I mean, I remember the first time as a, as a unit, our staff was able to gather as we came back from COVID and somebody had this idea of having a potluck. So we're sitting there and, and somebody comes up and says, can I serve you something? Oh, I'll go up and get it. Well, we'll get you, you, you want some arroz? And like, yeah, arroz, I know what arroz is. And then they said, we'll get you some pernil. Well, that's, that doesn't communicate to me it, either in, in the Spanish parts of my roots or the Mexican part of my roots. And I had to ask, what's that? And then, you know, they held up a piece of chicken. I'm like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll take some pollo. And I had to ask, like, what makes it I pernil? this pork. Pork. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. See, that's that's how confusing it is. <laughs> the other white meat. Right. Um, <laughs> and so it's 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 it is in fact moments like that right. that I realize I'm I'm a Latino, but I'm I'm truly Puerto Rican or Dominican adjacent. Right. Right. You know, I claim to be a fellow traveler as a Latino, and then we're confronted with things, and you're like, or the first time I. I the first time I You're heard gonna somebody, say it on camera. I'm going to say it. The first time I heard somebody said they were catching the Wawa. Uh-huh. And I just sat there dumbfounded going, I what's I they said the entire sentence in Spanish. I'm pretty good at Spanish, it's my first language. What's a Wawa? <laughs> I don't know what a Wawa is. What do you use? Autobus? Autobus. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so <laughs> I, I went and you know, tugged on somebody's what, what what's the Wawa? I thought, is that water? Because it sounded more like water, right? It's, and he, the guy looked at me and he pointed, he goes, look, camiones. And I, I looked at, and I go, the buses? And he said, yeah, los autobuses aquí son la, la a guagua? <laughs> and he said, yeah. And he looked at me like, everybody knows it. Why don't you know this? You speak Spanish. How do you not know this? It's moments like that where you're like, okay, we share a lot in common but there are things that are that we can still learn from each other and well, we can laugh about. You know, word like that, I, I would even refer to as being Spanish Ebonics, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. you know, it's a matter of like where you are. It's part of your environment, right? And but, I almost even think it's urban. It could be, but you know what's great about Hispanic Heritage Month is it puts those things on the table for us to celebrate together, right? And so you're, you're in a place where you think, hey, I'm bilingual, I'm bicultural. And you realize the rich diversity, the differences regional between city and urban, between island and mainland, between Central America and South America. And there's still so much to learn from each other right. as Latinos. Right. And yet at the same time, for good and for bad, there's a common set of experiences that pull us together. Um, there's a common aspiration for those of us who come from immigrant families. Um, and we do have a language and a lot of features of the culture that we share in common and uh, Just different dialects and, and yeah, I mean look When we were all younger whether we were in Miami or New York or Chicago or Los Angeles or San Francisco where I grew up and you turn it on 
Univision on a Saturday night. Look, we were all watching Don Francisco, right? Right. We were all watching Don Francisco. <laughs> he did not bring out Sábado Gigante. <laughs> I mean, what unifies Latino people in, in the United States more than, you know, what, you want me to go with Chapulín Colorado? No, no, <laughs> not Chapulín. <laughs> so, so, you know, you, you, you look at Sábado Gigante, and, and, and now as, a, as an academic who studies the media, I go back and I watch a three-hour show, and you literally see them intentionally trying to connect the various different ways that we're Latinos together. You know, we're going to play a little bit to the Cuban people here. Okay, we're going to pull in the Puerto Rican people. All right, we, we're in Mexico, so we better show some of that, you know. Uh, the Chile people, I'm from Chile, okay, we got to show. And so you see that intentionally in there, in that, in that, in that Mexico, in that blend. And it's, it's a wonderful thing. And, and I think if people understood us celebrating Hispanic Heritage Months in the United States from outside our community, they would really appreciate the, the joy, uh, the fun that we have. Cause right, because we make everything fun, even when it's educational. Yeah, right? Who, who throws a better party than us? Uh, hello. hello. <laughs> And, and it doesn't matter the theme. Now, speaking of themes, before we go, I know that there's a, another event coming up in Puerto Rico with Somos and the yeah. Mexican Studies Institute uh, um, that's being sponsored by Assemblymember Karines Reyes. Yes. Really, can we mention that really quickly absolutely, before we absolutely. go? Absolutely. So I, I think everybody knows what, what, what the Somos gathering is about. And it really puts elected officials, uh, supporters from our community, leaders from our community, nonprofits, educational folks together. Um, and we gather in Albany in the spring, and in the fall we gather in, in San Juan. And you know, this year what we really wanted to focus on from an educational perspective, from a Bronx perspective, are the ways in which we collaborate, the ways in which we figure out ways to help and reach out to the communities, the way we cross over boundaries, um, and ultimately the common goal, which is to lift up the Latino peoples in the five boroughs. Now look, I, I care about my friends in Queens and Brooklyn. I'm really interested in lifting up the Bronx. I mean, this is my backyard. This is my community. Um, and, and, and the Mexican Studies Institute, God bless Jose Higuera and his team, they work in all five uh, boroughs, but they know that we, we really have a, a mandate in the Bronx. And we have a wonderful partner in, in, uh, in elected officials like Karinas Reyes. And so, we're, we're looking forward to it. We, we did an event last year as well, uh, where we unified the three uh, Latino institutes and, and talked about what we do separately and together. And we're hoping that we can take that in the context of the Bronx and also talk about the ways in which we can support each other, um, help develop the Bronx socially, economically, culturally for sure. But I think there's another component that may be related to the economics, and that is the health and well-being of our people. And so each of those areas are areas of resource and opportunity, but also areas of scarcity. And that's why we come together to try to fill those gaps. Well, I want to say we thank you so much sure. for taking the time to be here with us. My and, pleasure. And for being so candid about everything. Sure. It's amazing to be in the presence of the president of the Lehman College campus and have this very authentic conversation. I, I genuinely appreciate it. So thank you. It's my pleasure. My pleasure. Happy Hispanic Heritage Month. You want Doctor. Mente. All right, you guys. Dr. Fernando Delgado, once again, president of Lehman College. And for more information on everything we discuss and or classes and courses at Lehman, you can go to lehman.edu. Lehman.edu. Stay tuned. There's more open after the break.